Hey, let's quickly go over everything that we have to consider to set up Google Ads for an affiliate marketing offer from start to finish. Here's an overview of what we're going to cover in this video. We're going to start with the different strategies for affiliate marketers when using Google Ads. We're going to go over the keyword research part of the strategy. We're going to be looking at how to build the landing page and finally how to set up tracking. Now let's start with the Google Ads strategies for affiliates. The first thing to consider before anything else is the strategy that you're going to use. I like to divide Google Ads for affiliate marketing into three different strategies. The first strategy is a top of funnel. This is when you target people that are unaware of the solution, which is your product, to their problems. If you don't know what that means, take a look at these keyword examples right here. First one, how to lose weight after 40. This is if you're in the weight loss niche. How to control cravings. Again, this is for weight loss products. Imagine that you're promoting one of the ClickBank supplements, for example. The people who are searching for these keywords are not yet aware of any solution. It could be a fitness program, it could be a supplement, etc. So a few considerations if you are going to go for this type of marketing. You can expect the lowest cost per click possible at least among the strategies that I'm going to show you here. You can expect the lowest competition because there are thousands of possible keyword combinations that you could make and insert into your ads. Next, you can expect the highest difficulty to turn it profitable. And this one demands robust tracking precisely because you have so many keywords to work with. You need to know exactly which keywords are working for you and which keywords are only costing you money. The next strategy is the middle of funnel strategy. This is when you target people who are aware of their problem and looking for a solution, but they are still evaluating their options. If you don't know what that means, take a look at a few of these keyword examples. First one, best VPN in 2025. This is if you're promoting a VPN service like NordVPN or ExpressVPN, etc. Next, best weight loss supplements for women. This is if you are promoting a weight loss supplement similar to those you will find on ClickBank. The people who search using these keywords are aware of the solution. In this case, it's a VPN or a supplement, but they are not sure about which brand or service is the best for their particular needs. Here are a few considerations. If you're going to go for this strategy, you can expect a higher cost per click, at least compared to the top of funnel strategy. You can expect a higher competition because your keyword options sort of reduce, and you can expect it to be slightly easier to turn profitable. The last strategy is the bottom of the funnel. This is when you target people who are actively looking for a specific product. The keywords in this strategy usually include the name of the product. Here are a few keyword examples. ClickFunnels website, if you are promoting ClickFunnels, where to buy Prodentim, and ClickFunnels review, again, if you are promoting ClickFunnels. The people who search using these keywords know exactly the brand that they want. So this is the strategy that contains the highest intent possible. So here are a few considerations if you're going to use uh, brand bidding. You can expect the highest cost per click. You can expect the highest competition because in my opinion, this one contains a low barrier of entry. It's the easiest to get into. And this one demands click protection against fraud. When you're promoting a product in the bottom of the funnel, you are a very easy target to your competitors. All they have to do is search for the name of the product and they're gonna see your ad. And once they see your ad, they start clicking on it repeatedly, driving your costs up and making you give up on your campaign. Now let's move into the keyword research part of the video. The strategy you choose will obviously decide the keywords that you are going to add to your Google Ads. This step is important because we can get keyword ideas, we can get traffic estimates, and we can analyze the competition while doing our keyword research. You can use Google's Keyword Planner to do your keyword research, or you can use a paid tool like SEMrush. As you go down in the funnel, your keyword options decrease and your competition will increase. Now let's look at the keyword research when you're at the top of the funnel. When you're at the top of the funnel, you can just enter general keywords into your keyword planner. For example, if you're an affiliate of a VPN service wanting to use Google Ads, think of what unaware people will type on Google that would get them to sign up to your VPN service. Here are a few examples. They could type 
how to protect my online privacy. They could type, watch shows abroad. They could type, how to browse anonymously. If you think about it, the answer to all of the keywords above is get a VPN. Because with a VPN, you can protect your online privacy, you can watch shows abroad, and you can browse anonymously on the web. The planner will then give you keyword ideas. And for better results, make sure you separate different topics in different ad groups if necessary. For example, how to protect my online privacy cannot in any way be in the same ad group as watch shows abroad. Because even though both of them are promoting a VPN service, they are sort of talking about different things. So you want to separate different topics in different ad groups. Now, moving on to the middle of the funnel. In the middle of the funnel, you will simply enter keywords that compare different options, features, or benefits. If you want to promote an instant translation device, for example, think of what people who are looking to compare different translator devices will type on Google. A few keyword examples, they could type best instant translator device, or they could type translator device without internet. The first keyword above this one aims to compare the available options, while the second keyword aims to compare while focusing on a specific feature or benefit of the product. When we are doing the middle of the funnel, we are not trying to bid on the name of the product. We are just looking for people who are solution aware, who know what they want, but they are looking to actively compare the available options in the market. Now, moving to the bottom of the funnel, you will simply enter keywords that include the name of the product with high buying intent. Think of what people who are looking to buy a certain product would type on Google. For example, they could type buy Prodentim or Prodentim best deal or Prodentim free shipping or Prodentim discount. And these keywords will always include the name of the product or service. That's why it's called brand bidding and you have to make sure that the product owner allows this type of marketing. Now let's move into the phase where you build your landing page. In most cases, you would need a unique landing page for each topic that you address with your keywords, especially at the top of the funnel. Failing to do so will lead to a low ad strength score and loss of impressions because your ads will just stop showing. For example, if you are promoting a VPN service at the top of the funnel, and you have an ad group focusing on how to protect my online privacy and other similar keywords, your landing page should include a very similar headline, like want to protect your online privacy? Start with a secure VPN. It's also good practice to test more than one landing page. You may find that a different landing page converts at a higher rate than you think. Let's look at landing pages at the top of the funnel now. At the top of the funnel, Educational and blog style landing pages that lead to the offer at the end are mostly used. Let's take a look at one example here. When you type on Google, how to hide my IP address, you get this ad. Let's click on it and see the type of landing page that they're using. It's clearly an educational or blog style landing page. Very straightforward. Why you need a VPN, policy considerations, technology considerations, etc. You can see that it's an educational post and you can see that there are links scattered throughout this post with the VPN, possibly containing the affiliate link of the person. Now let's move into another ad. If your offer already has a blog style sales page, this is what you could do. When you search on Google for home remedies for bad breath, you get this ad and let's look at the landing page. This is the landing page that we get. You can see that in the background, we get a snapshot of the original sales page that looks like a blog post. And then there's a pop-up that offers you the option of viewing a review of the product or going to the official page. And so this is what we get. This is the original sales page for this product. And the sales page itself already looks like an educational blog post. So this person found a clever way of driving people to the sales page using a top of funnel keyword. And this is what you want to try and do. Now, moving on for the keyword that we talked about that says how to watch sports abroad. Here's a clever landing page that I found as well. Very straightforward, never miss a game. Use a VPN to watch your favorite sports anywhere. This person is clearly using that keyword to drive people to sign up to a VPN service. And of course, it's an educational blog post. It's full of content, but I guess this is what Google likes. Now, moving on to the middle of the funnel. 
Usually, listicles are used in the middle of the funnel. And if you don't know what a listicle is, a listicle is a type of landing page that's structured as a list of items, each item having a short explanation or description. For example, when we search for best VPN for watching Netflix, we get an ad and let's look at the landing page. And this is the landing page that we get, top 10 best VPNs. And you can see when you scroll down, there is a list of VPNs that they sort of recommend. They've ranked from one to 10. And every VPN service offered here contains a button that takes you to the website for you to sign up. And I would bet that most of these buttons contain affiliate link, if not all of the buttons contain affiliate links. And this is what a listicle looks like. It's a list of items, each with a short description and with a button that takes you to the website to sign up. We can look at other examples of listicles here. Top five best Wi-Fi extenders. When we look at the landing page, of course, just another listicle being used in the middle of the funnel. And so this is what the landing pages in the middle of the funnel generally look like. Now, moving on to the bottom of the funnel or with brand bidding, mostly bridge pages are used. Bridge pages are pages with the sole intention of sending users elsewhere. If you don't know what that means, we're gonna take a look at it in a minute, but these pages are usually not so compliant with Google. Another type of landing pages I'm seeing a lot are cookie, pop-up pages that are becoming very popular now, but they are probably not so compliant as well. And review pages are also used for review-based keywords. Now let's take a look at this ad. When we look for Prodentim on Google, we get this ad, Prodentim with discount. Let's look at their landing page. And their landing page is a classic example of a bridge page. This landing page contains only a headline, an image, and a button that takes people to the sales page. Next. Cookie pop-up pages are very popular now, but they are not so compliant. There are paid WordPress plugins to set this up if you don't want to do it manually. Let's look at an example of a cookie pop-up page. When we look for buy prostadine, there's an ad and let's look at their landing page. And this is what I mean by a cookie pop-up page. This page contains a snapshot of the original sales page in the background. And there is a fake pop-up message here about a cookie policy, but the trick is when you click on accept, you actually go to the affiliate link of the person. These pages don't seem to be compliant, but they have been around for more than a year now, so I guess Google is still allowing. It's easier to stay compliant with a review page when you are targeting review-based keywords. For example, when you search for Prodentim Review, you get an ad about Prodentim Review and the honest truth. Now, looking at their landing page, a classic review page of a product. These types of landing pages contain more original content, which Google seems to like the most. Finally, let's talk about tracking. Tracking means setting up a system that records what happens after someone clicks on your ad. So you know which clicks, which keywords and ads have turned into conversions. A conversion is any action that you want your ideal customer to take on your website. It could be to make a sale, it could be to sign up with their email address, or it could be to download an app and so on. Why do we set up tracking? To find out the exact keywords and ads that generate sales and ROI. To learn which devices, it could be a phone, tablet, or desktop, which geos, which is another word for countries or locations, and even what time of the day produces the better ROI. To send conversion data back to Google automatically, this is very important for smart bidding strategies like target CPA or maximize conversions. And we can also use a tracker to set up fraud protection, especially when we are doing brand bidding. I use a tracker called ClickMagic, but there are several out there that do the same things. Whatever tracker you choose, the steps you have to take will be more or less the same. I will be showing examples here using ClickMagic. The first thing you have to do will probably be to connect your tracker to your ad account on Google. This will allow Google and your tracker to share information automatically. The next thing you will have to do is to connect your tracker to your affiliate network using a tool called the Postback URL tool. This will allow your affiliate network to send sales or initiated checkouts to your tracker. And your tracker can then send this data back to Google if you've done the step above. Usually your tracker gives you a link that you will have to paste somewhere inside your affiliate account. The third step that you will have to take 
is you will have to modify your affiliate link for tracking purposes. The affiliate link that you receive from your network will need a slight modification before you can insert it in your landing page. If you don't do this, the clicks to your affiliate offer and possibly sales will not be tracked. This modification usually involves adding a small piece of text at the end of the link. Your tracker should guide you on how to do this. The next step is to install a tracking code on your landing page. This is also called the no redirect tracking. In this case, your tracker will give you a piece of code that you will paste into the header section of your landing page. This will allow the tracker to track everything that happens on your landing page. And finally, you will create your ad URL. And this is the URL that you will paste in your ads. It's a modified version of your landing page link. You need to modify it first by adding a few parameters to your landing page link that will allow you to track your keywords, ads, ad groups, devices, placements, etc. all based on the parameters that you choose to use. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want more info about Google Ads with affiliate marketing, make sure to watch any of these videos right here. I'll see you next time.